My name is Commissioner Frank Avila, and this is election 2014. And as my guest, I got Luis Aurora Jr. Uh, thanks for being on our show, Luis. Thank you, Frank. Thank you for having me. And Luis is running for Cook County Commissioner in the 8th District on a Democratic ticket. Yes, sir. And uh, uh, Luis, uh, the 8th District, you were born and raised in the 8th District? Uh, yes, sir. Most of my adult life and even from childhood. Um, I was actually born in the Region American Hospital, which is, is in Humble Park. I, and you went to school and... Uh, yes, sir. So Public you, school. Yeah. So you know backwards and forward. Yeah. You know, could you tell me what area covers the 8th District? Well, uh, let me... It's a little easier for me to tell you more uh, by wards. By wards? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. It uh, covers a little bit at the higher up north, uh, the 33rd Ward. Goes down to the 26th Ward, the 1st Ward. A uh, little bit of the 32nd, the 30th Ward, 26th Ward, some of the 36th Ward, and also the 31st, Frank. Oh, it's a large area. Yes, sir. It's a big area in that 8th district. Yep. Now, in, in that 8th district, uh, 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 what are some of the concerns? Like, you know, everyone is talking about health, quality health care. Is that part of your platform as a Cook County Commissioner well, when you're going to get elected? Well, I wouldn't say so much. I don't want to call it a platform. Okay. I like to say uh, my, my concerns and the issues that the community has. Um, I think health care for everybody uh, is a must. Yeah. We have too many people in our community, in the community that I represent, that uh, are struggling sometimes with one or two jobs. So uh, I think that affordable health care, and that's something that they're trying to do in county care, yes. that that's something I'm going to push and advocate for. And, and your area covers probably every ethnic group and from and, and the you're, you care about the kids always up to the seniors yes I'm sir getting that quality care yes sir seniors seniors is also very important uh, at some point I hope we all get to <laughs> get to make it yeah. um, I was actually at an event today yes a uh, senior event a Christmas party in the yeah. uh, with Roberto Maldonado who yeah. has his annual uh, Christmas party yeah. I was there a uh, very nice event, and I hope to at some point mirror that and, and do things like that myself for the people in the 8th District. Yeah, throughout the whole county. Uh, that was with Alderman Maldonado, and, yes, and he's what, in the 26th Ward? In ward? the 26th Ward. And so he had this uh, uh, senior. Yeah. And, and, uh, and so, so you went there so the senior could say, look, this is what I'm going to do in quality health care. You know, they, they, they appreciate that because everyone needs that quality hair care right now. Oh, I, I well, appreciate working for them. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. And, then, and, and uh, like you said, people are doing two or three jobs just to feed their family, send their kids to school, and get that health care. Yeah, two or three jobs, and some of them are unfortunately uh, minimum wage jobs. Yes. Uh, so we need to find a way to help ensure everybody. Yeah, and, and this is where your, your uh, living wage comes in right yeah um, I'm actually I'm actually currently now Frank and I have been for the last 18 years uh, I'm a teamster yeah I'm a member of local 700 uh, I have their full support yeah as of many other unions such as uh, 130 uh, and local 150 who, ha who have given me their support yes and I know I know how to lead that fight and fight that fight for the people to get their living wages well, that's, that's good because a living wage, uh, a, a lot of people, if they make $8 an hour, as you were mentioning, or $8.50, mm -hmm. and they have a family, how could they afford to pay rent, send their kids to school, uh, buy food? It's, it's, very, healthy. Difficult. It, it's, it's hard. very difficult. It's and very difficult. And you also have, uh, unfortunately, in, in some of the communities, single parents. Yes. Uh, and we have a problem now in Cook County uh, with the recidivism rate in the county where our jails, they're bu sem uh, busting at the seams. Yes. So um, I want to try to develop more programs uh, for our youth to help prevent them from going to jail in the first place. Yeah, and, and the type of programs that they probably need is, is uh, uh, our world is changing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Before we, you know, locally we were concerned only on a local basis, but now we're on a world economy. Yeah. So in your 8th district, you have to make the youth aware of what's going on out outside the 8th district to get jobs. Yeah, not only in the economy as a whole, but uh, I, I would like to try to do uh, sort of like a, a needs assessment to see what the community needs and what jobs are booming in the community. Yes, yeah. So when those kids do uh, tend to steer off that path, we can grab them and help train them 
to for some of those jobs, the upcoming jobs, the future jobs. Yeah, and then bringing uh, uh, manufacturers into the 8th District. Yeah, I'd like to see uh, at, if there are manufacturing jobs that they do hire within the district and hire some of the people in the community. And then if there's a construction job that's going on in the district, then you would like to see first choice of pe <laughs> people That'll that are living, great. right? <laughs> of people that are working in the district, if they're improving the district, you'd like to see some of those uh, families or residents in the 8th District That's, that's definitely, working. If, if you can beautify the 8th District in any way, I think you start by doing that with some of the people that live there. Yeah, now how, how large in population is that 8th District? Uh, must be, uh, what, a couple hundred thousand, uh, 300, 400,000? Uh, to my knowledge, Frank, it's, it's it's in the six figures. Six, it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, it is. Yeah, over yeah. 100,000, I believe. Yeah, and then uh, you, you mentioned all the wards that you cover, too. Yes, sir. I mean, you have to, besides being the Cook County Commissioner, you have to work with every alderman in, the, in your area to, to provide that type of service. Well, that, that's something that, that I, I want to do. This yeah. is one of the reasons why I'm entering the race. Um, currently, um, when I was just thinking about running it and knocking on doors and going out to the community, um, I asked a few people if they knew who their current commissioner was. Yes. Uh, sadly, the response was not too many people did know. So that kind of helped me uh, get in the race, and it's something that I've wanted to do for a long time. So um, I believe that uh, these people here need to know who their Cook County commissioner is. Yes. And that's something that I want to change by working with people in the Illinois state government, people in the city, and people in the county. And it's so important because you have to work with the aldermen to see if there's any grants coming through to help your area. You have to work with the state legislators to see uh, if there's any grants also that could come into the 8th District. You have to work with your congressman. You have to work with, yeah. with everyone. Well, I, I learned, Frank, at an early age, um, when you want to get something accomplished, you, it's, it's harder to do it by yourself. Yes. So I want to be that medium. I want to be able to work with everybody together to get to make that common goal to build stronger and safer communities. And, and I'm glad you made a uh, safer community because you would like to see, uh, er, you know, you pick up the paper all the time mm -hmm. and you read about crime and crime. And in the 8th District, uh, I think one, I was reading one of your brochures yeah. and you want to make that a crime-free neighborhood in the 8th District. Well, I want to try my best. Yeah, I, I, I want to try my best crime and for our kids to be able to yeah. walk down the street to go to school again that where that's where our programs lead that's that's what I'm going to advocate for because it tends to be that there is crime and sadly because of our youth I believe don't have uh, enough opportunities in our community that they tend to seek other other things yeah and and this is I think this is where you're going to work with the police department yeah I'm going to work with the county with the police in the county, the sheriffs, the police officers, state troopers. The judges. The judges. Anybody who can help, <laughs> Frank, we're willing. I <laughs> hope you can help, too. Oh, yes, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it's so important because a, a person wants to get up in the morning, and if he has a family, he wants to go to work and make sure that when the kids get up in the morning, they're safe going to school. Yes. If, it's a if, if he has a family, they, they could go to a, a, a grocery store to buy their food, yep. uh, provide a library. As you mentioned, you want to start a youth program. Yeah. And, and in this youth program, uh, we'll, we'll provide uh, them something to learn to compete with the world. Definitely. And, and mm -hmm. all this is, is will uh, help the uh, free crime neighborhood because if a kid doesn't have an education, he can't find a job. He hangs around in the corner and he needs some dollars. Where do they go? Well, that, that's, that's where my youth program is going to try to come in because they tend to seek to crime because they don't, they look to gangs and crimes to fit in. Sometimes some of these children come from single parent homes. Yes. Where the parents are working two jobs to put food on their table and they seek to the gangs for that, that family environment. I want to give them a sense of being, give them an opportunity. When I was growing up, there was after school programs, there was the gym teacher, there was that counselor that you can talk to. I want to try to bring those common sense things back. And then uh, you probably will work with uh, the Board of Education too. Yeah. Because yeah. you have, uh, not only that you have public schools in your area, you got private school and the religious schools in your area. Yeah. Well, so you'll probably work with all the different types of schools in your area. I'm going to try to work with everybody, Frank. Yes. Um, you mentioned public schools and private schools. There's religious also schools. charter schools, yeah, yeah, religious right. schools. I'm, I'm sort of, I'm pro-education. Yes. Anything yeah. that helps a kid learn and anything that could help our children stay off the streets, 
I think is good for the people and good for, for the 8th District. Well, that's the key because to have a good 8th District in economics, in raising the family, providing health and welfare, that who's going to provide this in 8, 10 years from now? Are the kids. Yeah. So we need a person like you as a good county commissioner to educate the the presence in your county so they could educate the kids because who are the first educators of the kids the parents it all starts at home it all starts home. so if, 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 you, if you don't have a good program for the home then how are they going to educate the kids and if, if, if there's not a good program in the 8th district in, for the schools how can a teacher educate the kids where the kids could go home and maybe they educate the parents yeah and it's the, some of the I, I want to try to bring a center to our community yes a center to the 8th district where we not only help our kids, it's help some of the adults. I live, I live currently now in Logan Square. Logan Square. I yeah. grew up uh, in Belmont Cragen area. Okay. Uh, and some of the, the families and most of the families, sometimes they still only speak Spanish. Yes. So not only a learning center for the children, but some sort of a safe haven for the family where they can all be welcome and all learn. Yes, yes. And, 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 and that's, that's the key to providing, as, as you mentioned, you want to provide quality health care. You want living wages? Because how can a person get a living wage if he doesn't have an education? Correct. There but there are, there are uh, trades still trade. out there that they can learn that they make honest livings. Yes, yes. And when I believe if you just touch one person, it's a trickle-down effect to show them some responsibility that they could then teach to their families. And, and, and you mentioned that you were endorsed by unions. Yes, sir. So you could work with the unions if they have any type of programs for them to enter to be an apprentice, mm -hmm. and because the unions uh, that you mentioned, they have uh, they're very good paying jobs, and and this is where you could help your residents in the eighth district to provide and maybe help them get in these apprentice programs because you'll know the business agents there. Yeah, that, well, that's one that's the, one of the main reasons that I'm I'm running for this. Um, I've actually wanted to run for office before. Um, I was actually passed up. A lot of people don't know for um, alderman of the 26th ward at one time. Oh. I was under consideration. Yes. Um, the alderman at that time went to work for the governor. Yes, I, I remember, yes. Um, so then I actually met with the mayor, uh, the mayor Daly at yeah, that yeah, time, yeah. interviewed twice for that position, uh, but through the process, someone else was chosen. Yeah. So that, that gave me the light, that gave me the fire to keep wanting to do this. I see, and yeah. the person who was chosen now is endorsing you. Yes, sir, yes, uh, sir, uh, which I've also been endorsed um, by the Democratic Party. Yes, and that's important because the alderman, uh, uh, you mentioned you went to his uh, Christmas party uh, today. They had about seven, 800 uh, seniors there, and that was Alderman Maldonado. Yes, it was. And he endorsed you. Yes, he did. Yeah, and, and you got endorsed by the Cook County Democratic Party. Yes. So, so you do have the endorsement of the Cook County Democratic Party because I, I think they endorsed you because they realize that you're the one that could solve the problem in the 8th district. Well, I think not only that is they endorsed me also uh, because I think they need a new leader in the 8th district. Yes. Um, our current commissioner there uh, hasn't been a full-time commissioner. Um, he's held uh, two government jobs and um, as I mentioned before, uh, I am a Teamster and I've actually am still working for the Department of Water Management. Uh, I've been there now for a total of 18 years and hopefully uh, come March 19th, I'm victorious, and I would be able to put in uh, uh, my resignation letter to become a full-time commissioner. Oh, so you'll be a full-time commissioner. Yes, sir. Which is important because everything that you want to accomplish, you can't do it on a part-time basis. No, sir. I mean, and, and, and you got to get up early in the morning to work late at night because you got a big area. You know, it's not an alderman area. No, <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> large. Right, as you mentioned, it covers, what, five or six wards. Mm -hmm. So here's, you know, here's the map. That's the area that when you're the Cook County Commissioner that you're going to have to uh, uh, work uh, from uh, 6 in the morning to 12 at night. Maybe, maybe you won't even sleep at night. I, I know that area very well, Frank. Again, being born and raised in, in most of the 8th District uh, from a kid into my adulthood. Yes. Uh, and now, because I'm running for office, I'm knocking on a lot of doors and yes. visiting a lot of homes, yes. meeting a lot of people. And, 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 and what are some of the people saying? You mentioned that they don't even know their Cook County Commissioner? No, sir. Um, again, you can't know, it's hard to know somebody that does their <laughs> job part-time. Yeah, no, you can't do anything <laughs> part-time to do a good job. Correct, yeah. correct. 
because you know we uh, we're living in an age right now that it's a, it's a world economy that our kids are are going to be competing against a person in China or a person in Asia or in the European that's who they're going to compete against yep, yep. and and this is what I think this is part of your program that you have especially towards education yeah, yeah, being a father myself, being a father of two children. Two, two, uh, 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 what's, what's their ages? Uh, I actually, Frank, I have a daughter who is a freshman in college. Oh. Uh, she, she'll be 19. 19. Matter of fact, uh, a freshman this weekend. in college? Oh, yes, okay. sir. And I have a two and a half year old son. Oh. Now, yeah. now what, what school is she going to now? Uh, she actually is attending college in Orlando, Florida. Oh. She doesn't like the cold too I much. Know. Well, <laughs> you know, you know I'm, I'm glad you mentioned that because to raise a family, to send them to grammar school, high school, and then they want to go to college. I mean, it's so expensive now to go to college. And sometimes if, if, uh, if a young student wants to major into a certain uh, field, they may have to go to a college that specializes in that field. And it may not be in the state, it may be someplace else, and it's expensive. And how are they going to raise money? Uh, their family may not be able to support them, and that's where we have to find jobs for them now so they could save money to go to school. Not, not only find jobs, but I think find jobs here within, within the state, within the city and the county, yes. and not so much outside. Yeah. Um, I, like, I like to promote the community, and, uh, obviously the Cook County. I think our jobs should stay here, and when companies tend to look for, for presidents and CEOs, they, they tend to <laughs> look first to the person next to them and people surrounding them and not so much go out of, out of state for stuff yeah. like that. And then uh, you, you would probably promote uh, uh, tax incentive for manufacturers to come into your area. Uh, probably you, you're probably going to, uh, maybe when you're elected and, and you're out there serving your 8th district, you'll, you'll identify vacant land where a manufacturer could come in, locate it, work with the city, work with the state, work with the federal government, to see how you could bring that manufacturer in to support the 8th district. Support the 8th district and support the people that live in the district. Yes, yes, yes. Not, not only in the 8th district, but countywide. Um, I think... Con con that's good. I'm glad that you're not only thinking about the 8th district. No, First, 8th district is your main goal, but cover everyone. Yeah, yep. Uh, um, being only one of the, the, the two, I believe, Latino um, Cook County board members, yeah. um, I'm not only going to want to be the face of, of Northside or a certain area. My job is going to be to best represent the people uh, in the community, in the people countywide. Sure, because whatever benefit you have outside of the 8th District will come back to the 8th District yeah. there. And, 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 and as you mentioned, it's a big area there. So, so you got, what wards again do you cover? Uh, we go all the way from um, the first ward. The first ward. 26th ward. 26th ward. We do the 32nd ward. The 32nd ward. 35th ward. 35th ward. 33rd ward. 33rd ward. 30th ward. Oh my God. 31st. The list gets on. It goes long and long. It goes on and on. Yeah. And then you would, uh, now, do you know each one of the aldermen uh, uh, in person? Do you, do you know who they are and everything? I know the majority of them, Frank. Yeah. But those that I don't know, I will keep my office will always yes, be open to open, those yeah. that I don't so I can build that relationship yes. because again you need you need a you need a team. Yes. Yeah. You cannot do it alone. Yeah. So I will be working with with all all the elected officials. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned yeah. all because not only that you have aldermen in your area. Mm -hmm. You got state representatives in your area, you have state senators in your area. Yeah, you, you have the congressmen in your area mm -hmm. and then you have to go above that you, the US Senate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah because they all have they, they play a different part in your area where the, the money comes from. Yeah, that we all play a different part, but I believe we should all be on the same page and have the same goal. Yeah, and then like uh, everyone uh, talking about uh, real estate taxes too. So you're gonna have to work with the Board of Appeal yep. and help the residents in your area to get a, a fair assessment on their homes. Mm -hmm. And you would probably have these uh, uh, public hearings Public throughout hearings, the world, yep. throughout the workshops. World. Workshops. Yeah. I'm going to give uh, a lot of people the information that they tend not to seek. Yes. Still, a lot of people sometimes are not too computer literate. Yes. So I want to be able to put that information yeah. out and make them aware of it. Yeah, so so you would, uh, and then you you probably have your office open to anyone and everyone in your area. Yes, sir. They're come, come in and, and, and visit you. Your staff will probably 
come and, and uh, uh, be available. Uh, I know you'll be available seven days a week. <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah, that's, that's part of being a full-time commissioner. My door will always be open to the public. Oh, yeah, and, and I, I, I think you make a very fine uh, Cook County Commissioner because one thing is that you were born in the area. Yeah. Two is that you, you know the educational system, which is the key for the families because they all, if they have a family, they have kids, they want to make sure their kids get a good education. And uh, the, what, the fourth one is a crime-free neighborhood, which is very important. Yeah, it there. is. It is. Yeah. Our kids need to be safe so they can go back out in the street and play. Oh, and yeah. their parents don't have to and worry. And then uh, your other uh, is a health care program. Yep. And then uh, you're going to start a new program of youth. It, it, that's the youth, again, I think I'm going to probably be the youngest commissioner on the board. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's going to be one of my main focuses yeah. is the youth and trying to keep them and, and more preventative yeah. uh, things so that they don't, they don't go to that other side. Well, I, I'm glad you mentioned prevention because mm -hmm. a lot of programs are at the back end when they're already in trouble, mm -hmm. they're already suffering, uh, they already, uh, if they commit a crime, the police are there already, uh, they go to court, the judge already. But you have to have, as you mentioned, very good, is a prevention. I mean, stop them before this is ever happening. And then the only way to have this is uh, is a, have a program, have a good uh, uh, ed educational system in your district, uh, provide the uh, type of programs where the kids could come and learn. Definitely. You're working with the unions already. Uh, you could provide them uh, uh, information about how to become an apprentice in some of these unions. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned what? You mentioned what? The Teamsters, uh, Plumbers, 130. 150 as well. You want the operator engineers. Yeah. But, uh, but also, Frank, uh, I'm, I'm not going to turn my back uh, on those that are coming out of the system as well. Because okay. I ahead. believe they can be rehabilitated. Yes. You know, I believe everybody does at some point need a second chance. Oh, yes. So I, I'm going to help them as well, like you mentioned, with apprenticeship programs, with job placement um, education, counseling, anything that I could do to just stop and, and help prevent crimes. Yes. Now, uh, what are some of your other endorsements that you had? You had the unions now, yeah. you had the aldermen now, you had the Democratic Party, right? Uh, yeah. What are... Um, I, I also have the, the... I'm also proud to say, I'll put it to you that way, um, I have uh, the LGBT community, okay. I have... Um, I'm not sure if you know, but uh, Greg Harris, who is a state representative yes, in the Illinois House. Uh, on the north side. Yeah, he actually uh, gave me his endorsement. Oh. And uh, Rick Garcia, a gentleman by the name yeah, of Rick yeah, Garcia. I, I know Rick, yeah. Um, I was actually fortunate enough to be in, in the state house that day that they passed uh, the marriage equality bill. So um, that's something that I also look forward to working with them in that community as well. Well, well the Pope came out with a statement saying, who are we to judge? There, everyone, uh, we're all human beings, and and we should uh, treat each other. Love is a beautiful thing, Frank. Oh yes, yes, yeah. there, yeah. You know, uh, uh, going back to the eighth district, is that uh, is your eighth district the largest, or are, are they all equally the same in the Cook County? Uh, they should all be equally um, the same as far as voters in the census. Yeah, but not area. Especially now with, with the remap, yeah. um, where mines goes pretty far from east to west. Some might go further north, south, yet not as wide. So I think it's based on voter population. And then how far west do you go? Um, I go from, actually I start from western. I go as far as Narragansett. Oh, it's a big area. Yeah, yeah it's Western, 2400 west. To Narragansett. Whoever, I don't know how far <laughs> west Narragansett, but that's, that's a big area. You yeah, cover. I believe Narragansett is 64. And then Six, yeah. uh, Grand on the south. And Grand. And it goes actually all the way up to uh, parts in the 33rd Ward, which is Lawrence. Oh, it's a big so it's, area. it's a very big area. I and got then, my work cut out. And you have a lot of mix of people there. Yeah. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of good food. A lot of good food. You yeah. know any spots I could stop? <laughs> 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 well, you know, I, 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 I turn vegan, so I, I, I only eat uh, vegan food. Uh, so, so maybe maybe you and I will go visit some of your vegan restaurants in your. Well, I'm area. a meat and potatoes <laughs> kind of guy. <laughs> I'll take a rain check yeah, on the vegan exactly. food. <laughs> but but I, I I think what's most important in 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 uh, why you're running and and I think that's the key is the family. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. passionate, Frank. Yeah. Um, I, I've been involved uh, as a young man, um, knocking on doors, being in those grassroots yeah. operations, yeah. and knowing and just listening to the people. Yes. I, I'm, I'm going to be a voice for the people. I, I want to hold um, 
town halls or so to speak or have simple meetings with the community leaders and see what they want see what their needs are yes and and, and it's good because you know in, in your family you have a daughter in college mm -hmm. and you have a three year son so you you go you start from the top <laughs> of the education yeah i'm telling my age now i'm telling <laughs> my and, age and now you're 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 starting in preschool yeah so you'll you you understand from preschool to college what it takes to raise a family, to support a family, to pay a rent or pay a yep. mortgage, and, and make sure that they, they stay on the right track yeah. to get an education to help society. Yep. And my son's actually going to a daycare now currently in the district as well. Oh, no. good. So, so, yeah. and, and that's expensive too. How, how many people in your area, as you mentioned, a single family, a single person family, I mean, they have a hard time. There. She has to get up or he has to get up in the morning Make sure their their children is dressed, eat, yep. get up early, take them to the daycare, and then go to work and and make sure and they're thinking all day: Are they safe in the daycare? Yeah, yeah. And then they come home, they pick them up, and they're tired, and then they have to spend time with their kids in the, in the evening. I mean, it, it, it's important. It's a job all in itself of raising a family. So to have to worry about their safety is a concern of mine. Sure. And I just want to try to do my best and do what I can to, to help those kids be safe and families be better at night. Well, let's, let's re repeat uh, your, uh, uh, what, what your pledge, right? Mm -hmm. Your pledge is what? Quality health care, yep. living wages, crime-free neighborhood, support our returning veterans, right? Yes, sir. Um, we, have, we have, I believe, too many returning veterans that have learned trades and learned, learned stuff while serving in the military. And what, what I do not like to see as veterans, unfortunately, sometimes you go near the expressway and some people are asking for change and they hold those signs um, that say returning veterans. Um, they need help. Yes. They need help. They fought for our country. We need to fight for them when they come back. Well, that's good. My, my son got deployed for a year and then two years and uh, he's a lawyer and he came back and he had to re redo his practice. You know, when you're gone, yeah. you know, you're, you're gone uh, and it hurts you if you have a family. Well, I, I have a close friend of mine who was actually deployed three times. Three times? And oh. when, when he came back, he had to jump through a few hoops yeah. to get common, common uh, tutoring, sure. training, uh, the, just the, the downtime you need to get back into society, which are programs that I also want to try to help develop. Excellent, excellent. Thank you for being on our show, Luis. Aurora. Thank you. 8th District, Cook County Commissioner. Thanks, sir. In the 8th District.